time. Before I begin my opening remarks, I would like to recognize United States Capitol Police canine technician Jason Conlon and his four-leg partner, Jax. Thank you for coming, and uh, Jax is pretty popular in this, in this hearing. I thank you both for attending today's hearing. I think I speak for all of my colleagues here today when I say thank you for all you do to protect the complex in this nation. And having been one of the uh, Republican members on the baseball field that morning, I know the willingness of the Capitol Police to, 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 to pay the ultimate sacrifice for us. And that's literally what Officers Griner and, and Bailey did. They put themselves in harm way, harm's way for us. And we are all profoundly grateful for the service of our Capitol Police. Technician Conlon and Jax are an important reminder that canines are an integral part of our national security framework and serve in all levels of our government. From the United States Capitol to local municipalities, canine teams are working to save lives every single day. Dogs like Jax provide unmatched capabilities to secure our safety, including the detection of explosives, narcotics, concealed humans, currency, firearms, electronics, and chemicals, and are also used in search and rescue missions. Simply put, canines are an invaluable asset to our country. Over recent years, international demand for canines has increased dramatically. Experts report that this heightened demand has led to a shortage of suitable canines, making it difficult for the United States government to obtain the working dogs it needs. TSA has reported that the federal government is working to improve and expand relationships with domestic vendors. This uh, is a step in the right direction, but more work needs to be done. Efforts to obtain more dogs have reportedly been slow to materialize. In, May, um, in a May 18, 2017 hearing, TSA's Threat Assessment Division Director Melanie Harvey testified that TSA is working very closely with domestic vendors to build up, canine, uh, build up the canine supply, but has not identified a large enough supply to domestically do that. Industry professionals and domestic vendors have also reported difficulties in working with the government's canine procurement program, citing challenges in getting their dogs accepted for work. We are hoping today's hearing will serve as a starting point toward resolving those challenges. My primary hope for this hearing is that we, it will help us evaluate how we can increase the use of canines in areas that are clearly vulnerable to attack, including public areas of our airports, train stations, as well as other areas with high concentrations of people. To that end, we have a diverse panel of professionals today who will present information and ideas about how our government uses canines, and I look forward to hearing what they have to say. We must ensure that government agencies are able to purchase qualified canines so that they can meet their critical national security missions. I thank Chairman Katko for his leadership and partnership on this issue. I thank Ranking Member Demings. I have had uh, conversations, extensive conversations with both of them. That, that really led to this hearing, and I, I am very grateful for the work uh, that they put in on this. Clearly, this is an area that we can all agree deserves our attention and support. I now recognize the ranking member of the Subcommittee on Intergovernmental Affairs, Ms. Demings, for her opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 